Welcome to The Real Estate Niche Show, a show that focuses on top real estate professionals who specialize in different niches of real estate. My name is Ben Kogut. Join me as we dive deep into the professional and personal lives of the experts of the real estate industry. Welcome to the Real Estate Niche Show. I'm your host, Ben Kogut. And today I have not only one, but I have two very special guests. Uh, C.B. <laughs> Sevier and Michael Barnhart are the founders of the Adventurous Real Estate Investors. They specialize in a different type of ROI, return on impact. Though through real estate investing, they create immeasurable impacts with the residents they serve to create thriving communities. They're the owners and asset managers of 388 units across Oklahoma and Texas, and they host the Adventures of a Real Estate Investor podcast. And they also host a monthly meetup for real estate investors living overseas. Susie and Michael, thank you so much for being here. Did I miss anything? Anything else you want to add? Yeah, that was a great intro. Thank you so much, Ben. We're really excited to be here and, and to provide value for your listeners. I think one cool thing to add, though, is that we do live in the UK, so we are very, very far away from all our properties. Yes, we are very American, but we live on this side of the pond and invest in the US. That's uh, That's got to be a lot of hard work, especially with the time zone differences. And so let's dive into it. Let's, let's learn more about what your, uh, your special uh, real estate niche is. And at some point, I want to know how, how are you able to handle that from abroad? Absolutely. So I think our like niche is actually asset management from overseas. So I mean, like so many people in this business, like want the time freedom. And because we've like pretty much separated ourselves from the property, we've really put like systems and processes in place in order to be, to be able to do that from anywhere in the world, which like even just from what I hear from other people, like that would somewhat be like part of their future goals, you know, to be able to travel with their family or be able to do essentially what they want when they want. And so it's nice to be able to actually put this all together and have it come true and show people that it is very, very, very possible. Yeah. Yeah. Just to add to that too, is like, I feel like we've, we have it, even though it seems like we might have a disadvantage because we are 4,000 miles away from our properties. Um, I feel like we've gained such a large advantage in our business because we, I feel like sometimes like as Susie is mentioning, people in 10 years after they start their business, they want to get to the point where we're at now, like having all these systems and pro- processes in place where they can walk away and, and travel wherever they want. But we've learned how to run a business from anywhere in the world, basically, because that's our ultimate goal. Well, let's dive a little bit deeper into that. Can you talk a little about the systems that you put in place and how you came up with them? Yeah, just just for a little taste for your audience is just um, think things like, you know, going to walk the property before you submit an LOI, right? Um, okay, since, since Susie and I can't be there, we need somebody on the ground, right? So we've we've built really great relationships with several boots on the ground partners in the markets that we're interested in investing. Um, another thing too is like, since we can't be there, like, what would be the things that we want to see if we were there? Like imagining ourselves there and what we would want to look at and what questions we want to ask and things like that. And what we've done from that, like sitting down and thinking about it, but also looking at what other other syndicators and what other operators are doing when they first go look at a property and then distilling that down into a checklist Mm -hmm. and then providing that checklist to our boots on the ground partner and say, here's what we want you to take a picture of. Here, you know, you know, we want to take a picture of where the foundation meets the ground, right? So we can see the angle. Hey, is it sloping towards the building? Is it going to cause run out, you know, run issues and the flooding and stuff like that in the actual buildings? Like things like that, like that most time people just like walk right by and not realize that there's a, there's a grade that goes towards the building, which could cause issues like things like that. Or like taking pictures of all the air conditioning units on the property. And then we can get an accurate count of, okay, we need to underwrite to replacing 20 or 25 air conditioning units over the life of the deal. Right. And and also just taking pictures, like a lot of pictures of the roofs or getting contractors out there to do these things for us. Right. Um, Just thinking about all the things we would want to have done if we were actually to be there in person. And now we've just created a checklist 
and a place where they can answer those questions in real time, like we can see them and then upload pictures and things like that through a you know, Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever your yeah. flavor is for the for cloud-based uh, storage. Um, so that's just one example of you know a system or process that we have in place for walking properties before we submit LOIs. So that sounds like that's on the, the pre-acquisition side of things. I'm sure you have systems in place for after acquisition and the ownership of it. What can you elaborate a little bit more on what y'all have done to set yourself up for success uh, while you own the actual property? Yeah, absolutely. And I can talk about like from, you know, a little bit, I can talk a little bit about like, you know, once LOI is accepted all the way to closing, because that, even though that's a three month, three to four month process, like that is still a very laborious process. And it's very, it requires a, a lot of things, right? So like initially when we closed on our first property, we went back through and we're like, we filtered through 750, 752 emails and wrote down everything that took place from pre-LOI all the way through closing, right? And then we sure. able to distill all that down into a checklist. And I think now we have like over 200 points, 215 point checklist that we have. Okay, this is what we do pre-LOI. This is what we do once the LOI is accepted. This is what we do um, once the PSA is written and and agreed upon and, and signed and so that. This is what we this is when we activate our SAC attorneys. This is when we you know, get all these things rolling all the way, you know, insurance, lending and things like that all the way through closing. And it even comes down to as we transition from closing into asset management, we have systems down in place like, okay, two weeks out from closing, we have a strategy meeting with our property management company where we outline a specific business plan tailored to that property. And here are the goals for Q1, two, three, four, we own the asset. NOI goals, income goals, expense goals, things like that, and very detailed exactly how we want to turn each unit and what we're doing in each unit and how much we're spending in each unit, things like that. And then that helps with the transition through closing. And I'll let Susie kind of take it from here when we close on the deal mm -hmm. and uh, moving on to asset management. So I'm just going to like say like one thing, cause I like even just to condense this all, cause it's been, it's a lot so far. Um, we use Asana. So we just use a project management tool. So it'd be like Trello or monday.com so that we can pretty much eliminate ourselves from having to check our email like 400 times a day. And because if not everybody CC, then people would be reaching out to us saying like, Oh, did we get an update on this? And it's like, well, yeah, we got the update, but you should have been on the email. And so Within Asana, you know, we just have different tasks and it can be, you know, apartment 401 renovation and what's happening in there, or like dog waste stations, what's happening in there, like the gutter cleanings, has that occurred yet? Um, if we have any wood rot, like what goes there? Literally everything can have a line item and it can just be updated from anyone who has access to the Asana. So like our property management team has access, like our whole entire general partnership team has access. So like they can find all the answers that they need in there. And then it almost makes your team somewhat like very independent on themselves too, because they have to, they then have the like initiative to go in and look knowing that the answers are right there. But then even just like for our like weekly, we do like weekly KPIs, but like it's a Google sheet. So we can always see the changes that are being made to it. It's not like, oh, we have to wait every week to see if anything is like new on there for them to send it to us. Like everybody who has access to the Google sheet can see when something's being inputted. And I think those two things have really, really helped us like all just stay streamlined and in the same, I guess, space where like everybody can look whenever they need to. Nobody needs to be spending extra time asking people if this has been uploaded or this has been sent. Cause even when it comes from like quotes from vendors, like we know if it's in there or not. So if it hasn't been um, uploaded, we can't ever, they can't say like, oh, well, we sent it to this person. It's like, no, everybody has accountability now. Yeah. Yeah. Just to right. add to that too, is like, so having this project management software, like Susie's mentioning all those different line items, what's really cool about Asana is like, you have like, you know, fence repairs as a line item, you click on that and then it, it populates all of the chat, all the messaging from all the people, you know, for that specific line item. And you have quotes you can upload in there and things like that. And then it's really cool. is like, not only does it have a desktop app, but it also has like a phone app. So you can literally act, we can talk to our property management company, like almost real time, you know, like 
And we don't have to like, hey, let's set up a call so we talk about this. No, it's it's happening. Like we are asset managing on an hourly basis, right? Which is really cool, but also it can be very draining. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. I mean, it sounds like that's the way to do it. Have great software. And that's something that we haven't talked about on my podcast yet. Is there any other software or tools that you're uh, utilizing in, in addition to Asana? For asset management? Or that... just in general. Maybe, um, you, oh. know, I, you know, I guess maybe the next uh, topic or question I might throw at your direction is regarding raising capital. And um, I mean, I guess we can start with the yeah, idea to use any particular software to, to manage all that. But then actually the real questions I want to dive into are also regarding how, how do you go about raising capital from abroad? Can you talk about software? I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was on so it you, today and yeah. I don't remember the name. <laughs> yeah, use Syndication Pro. No, but what's the other one? What do we use for CRM? Oh, active Campaign. Active Campaign. That's what so, I wanted to yeah. talk about. <laughs> we use Active Campaign for like, you know, our constant contact with our investors. Um, and we do monthly, obviously monthly asset updates as well. Um, you're sending out the financials as well as like kind of what's going on with the property along with the video form and, and, and um, uh, text form as well. And so wait, I want to hit pause button real quick. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, you send out every month a monthly yeah. uh, financial statement and you do some sort of video as well. Maybe like tell me about that. What do y'all do? Oh yeah. So I just like, we'll do a video of the investor update. So like people would rather like listen when they're in the car or walking or something, then it gives them both options. And it's not too difficult for me to do. It's like an extra 15 minutes once a month. But every month it's like, Hey, yeah. we oh. lost a tenant. We got a tenant. We had a roof leak. Yeah. We did this yeah. in the landscaping. I rather over communicate than ever have somebody say that I don't communicate enough. Cause I hear that so often like, Oh, well, we left this investor because of lack of communication or yeah. like, we don't know what's going on because we only hear from them every quarter. And a lot happens in a quarter, like way too much happens in the, especially quarter. In the multifamily space. Right. Cause there's a lot of things, especially when you're like turning all the assets and you're trying to get to a certain NOI, right? Like, you know, if, if it's a heavy reposition or even a light one, like there's a lot that could happen in a month. Um, you could have 20 people uh, end up not renewing. And then, you know, you lost a quarter of your population uh, and you need to explain that, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, and there's a lot that happens in, in multifamily. And I think monthly, because like Susie said, like we, we hear it quite often in, in, you know, multifamily operators, like, yeah, they return the returns that we wanted, uh, and then they, they projected, but you know, they never told but us. We don't know how. We, we don't know how. <laughs> we don't know what, what's going on or anything like that. So, yeah, it's good. And, and let's take this a little bit further. How are you going about attracting investors into your world? Um, so, I mean, the biggest part that helped us, um, I mean, and even how our whole entire journey started was when like the world went virtual. That's when we knew we had like the greatest opportunity. And so when we went, virtual and everybody was used to zoom actually in all of my meetups and all the conferences we were going to, I'd snip the screen. That's what this means. And I'd reach out to everybody who attended. If I didn't have a chance to talk to them and be like, Hey, we were at the same conference or the same meetup. Like I'd love to get to know you and your like multifamily goals further. And that's really how we built our list because we found out right away. It was not going to be our friends and family. So we knew we had to find people a different way. And that is what worked because everyone was online. So like we no longer were meeting people just in our area, you know, like if we were in the States, we'd be meeting people like in Colorado Springs where we'll end up living again. And so we were able to get investors from everywhere because of that. Awesome. That's exciting. And, um, what, um, I, I just kind of curious because like we actually connected shout out to hunter thompson and adam carswell through the raise masters group and uh, i know that you guys just we were just chatting about you guys were here in austin not that long ago meeting with them and i'm just curious um how has that played a role in, in what you all do and you know anything else that you any other takeaways that you might be able to add to that yeah i think the biggest thing is like once you have your list like how are you giving them information so i think that's been the biggest thing like what do you have in your emails what do you have in your automations like how are you essentially like nurturing leads and continuing touch points um because it's not something that people are ever talking about you know in meetups or really in conferences so i like that the group has come together to do that and even though we're all 
in the group to like learn how to raise more capital. It's also like a very abundance mindset because like, yes, we all want so many investors, but we'll all help each other get so many investors because we're all in different spaces, you know, in multifamily or even in real estate and we're all in different locations. So it's not like we could hit everybody and like, in the same place anyways. But also one more thing, the speakers that they have on are phenomenal. Cause like they can just give you like really, you know, even one or two nuggets every month. And that changes everything about the way you think it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, I haven't thought about anything like that before. This is really cool. You know, like when you're listening to like that audio book and you're like, wait a second, I have to rewind and hear that again. That's kind of what it feels like. <laughs> Great. And I imagine that uh, the podcast that y'all have, maybe share a little bit about that. And how does that play a role in in all this? You can go. Yeah, I was going to say, so our podcast focuses on, you know, we interview people and the interviews are all about how people are leveraging real estate to make an impact, whether that's making an impact with the residents of the communities that they ended up purchasing, you know, apartment communities, or if it's an impact building, you know, orphanages in South America, right? Um, who lever- who are using like their acquisition fee or their cash flow from real estate to do that, right? To to build orphanages or to build schools in Africa. Like we have all kinds of people who are making impacts, whether that's small or big, right? Like it doesn't matter because you know, as Susie says all the time, we are all born to make an impact. Um, and that's what the podcast is all about. And so with the podcast, we're trying to attract people who are who are also looking to make an impact, right? Yes, it's great to make money and to build generational wealth and to get like amazing returns outside of the casino of the stock market, right? And um, it's just it's just great to be able to connect with those types of people who are looking to make an impact because that's what our number one priority is, right? Like we want to make an impact on the residents first um, and then also, but also at the same time, make an impact with our investors, right? To be able to help them, help our investors build generational wealth or whatever goals they have, right? Yeah, we read a book like very early on. So like with our first lockdown, it was a little over a hundred days and everyone was sent home from work. And so Michael and I decided to do a mini book club with each other. And the very first book we read for our mini book club was The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. And what he talks about is pretty much being like 1% better every day. So with our hope with the impact is that people can even just think about how they can be 1% better every day to get to where they need to be to be able to create an impact too, right? Because so many people think that they, like that's not, that's something they can't do. And so we're just, with all these different ideas that people are coming with onto the podcast, it's like, no, you can come up with your own because impact means something different to everyone. I love that. I love that. Can we dive a little bit deeper? Any other uh, nuggets or takeaways that you've learned from your guests on that podcast regarding uh, return on impact? I mean, I think the biggest thing is that like when you start to talk about people and not necessarily profits all the time, like the conversations with everyone change. So it doesn't matter like what type of business you're in. Um, People are the most important like equation of your puzzle. And so you need to figure out how to like respect them, love them, understand them, listen to them, you know? And so that's really all of it is that... (laughs) Like without any of our residents or tenants or whatever word vendor, leasey, you know, like it depends what type of commercial real estate you're into. Like without any of them, we don't have a business. So it's like, okay, how can we like nurture them and still nurture our our investors, right? Because they are still very important and a very big part of this. Like how can we bring them all together to create like harmony and success? Love that. And, but what, what, how do y'all overcome the scenarios where maybe there, that's a conflict where nurturing, uh, um, the best deeds of the, um, you know, the residents may not necessarily be in alignment with what's best for the investors, or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I think we just try to not have those types of investors invest with us. Right. So like we do 506 B. So like you have to have a pre-existing relationship and in our conversations, we're asking people why 
they want to invest in real estate. And that really gets people to open up and be much more intimate with us. And like through that journey, you pretty much understand like what they're about, what they're for. And then when we explain what we're about or for, you know, like from that response, we can get it because yes, like an extra $50,000 or $25,000 or a hundred thousand dollars when you're raising capital feels like a lot, but if you're going to have an investor who you're just butting heads with the entire time, like, was it really worth it? No, it never is. And because we're trying to create a better community for our residents, we also want to create like harmony within our investor community. Right. Granted, it's always one-on-one, but like harmony makes your day better. So why don't just try to keep it that way? (laughs) Amen. It reminds me of, I think it was John Mackey that wrote the book Conscious Capitalism. Have you guys checked that one out yet? No, I haven't. No, it, sounds, it sounds, it sounds very interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's the yeah, he's the founder or, or CEO of uh, Whole Foods. And oh, so very there's cool. there's a lot of uh values that are in line with what y'all are talking about. I think it's wonderful. Oh, Thanks. Cool. Yeah, yeah we'll have out. to check that out. I'm Thank excited. Conscious capitalism. Yeah, we'll put that <laughs> in the show notes. Yeah. Um, very, uh, very cool. Awesome. Okay. So let's, uh, let's keep moving forward. What's, uh, what's, what's next for y'all? What are y'all looking for? Um, you know, how are you going to grow this or not grow this? Like what's the, what's the strategy? Yeah. So I think, you know, what's kind of next for us, what we have on the, on the horizon is development. Um, so right now in one of the markets that we invest in, there's a need for housing, right. And we're not, you know, um, and especially workforce housing. Um, and so it comes back to making sure we take care of our residents, but also we're, we play a huge part in this community. It's a tertiary market, right? And so um, we want to make sure that we take care of the community as well and give yeah. back to the community. And, you know, by doing that, we will be able to provide, um, you know, affordable workforce housing, right? And not just, and when we talk about development, so we're, we have a current property that has some extra land on it now that we're going to develop on it at first. Because right now there's like, you know, 1,100 units that are needed currently to meet demand. And there's more big players bring in, you know, thousands and thousands of jobs over the next two years into this little market. Um, and so we're looking to do some developments there yeah. so we can give back to the community. And we're talking about like, you know, B, B, B minus class developments, you know, probably B class developments, but like affordable housing for workforce housing um, uh, members there because that's what's needed. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what's on the horizon. Um, you know, we're, we're recording now at the end of 2021. Um, we had a very long acquisition year. Uh, it was very long and successful acquisition year. We, we've taken a break now uh, for the holidays, but uh, we'll hit the ground running in, in first quarter of next year. And I was going to say too, I think like a lot of people have this like number of assets or like number of units goal. And I have found that like, I have taken myself away from that because I don't ever want to like feel disappointed because I didn't reach that goal. But I also don't want to feel disappointed if I've hit that goal and now I'm not successfully like asset managing. And so what I mean by that is like everybody knows there's a labor shortage going on right now. And so I actually spent like over a month in Tulsa, like helping out one of our properties, um, just because they, it needed it, you know? And I mean, that's like a huge part of to like return on impact and even giving back to the community. Like I, the maintenance guys and our property manager have way more passion now that they saw me, you know, like ripping carpet and pushing out furniture and, donating food, picking up dog poop, cleaning gutters, whatever you want to say, like I did it all because yes, like, although people get out of single family homes and go to multifamily to get away from tenants and toilets and trash, but like, what are you going to do when you have to be there? Like, yeah, yeah. Like it's, so it was just something we knew that we had to do. And after being there, I realized that like, I find a lot of joy being in the community and being around those people. Cause the impact is so much different. You know, even when I talked to residents and like finally told them who I was and they had seen me for a couple of weeks, you know, picking up trash and doing, checking water meters all the time, doing just a lot of phenomenal things. Um, Uh like even they changed a little bit. And so it's cool. Like, that's what I mean by 1%. Like 
of an impact every day or making yourself 1% better every day. But I just want to make sure that we can continue that because I don't ever want to outsource asset management because I don't, I know how I love my properties. And that just means more than I think how somebody else might love my properties. Very nice. Uh, I'm curious, um, you have friends in uh, in the UK, I'm sure. Like, do you, do you know anybody else that's doing this from abroad? Or like, what do people say uh, from the UK? If you tell them about it, I don't know. Um, any, like, what's the, what's the perspective from, from that side of the pond is kind of what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we don't have, um, I would say we have a lot of like, uk or english people that we talk to about this i mean we do tell them but they don't like they're not too interested they don't understand i mean i feel like a lot of there's not a lot of english people and i I don't want to say this bad or anything like that like i feel like americans are more entrepreneurial than english people and so americans get the entrepreneurial bug like they understand like a majority of them like i would say majority a lot more than i feel like here at least the people that i've met so far in England like so it's it's very difficult like we told we told people okay we were out at dinner with some friends and uh and some other people that we just met like we're telling telling the story that Susie just left her w2 uh well at the end of August of this year to focus on real estate full time and they're like oh like to focus on our business which is real estate and they're like oh that's cool so like are you looking for a job like no 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 like she act, she purposely quit her job and does not want to work for anybody except herself. And they're like, oh, that's oh, so cool. she's in between jobs. So she's in between jobs. <laughs> you know, before she like, no, 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 like they just don't get it over here. I feel like it was really, really hard to describe and to explain sometimes. But we do have some other American friends over here who we've met through real estate investing. And we host, as you mentioned at the beginning, we host a, a real estate meetup for people living overseas. Um, and investing in the States. Mm-hmm. So like we can all leverage each other's knowledge. Like, Hey, we ran into this roadblock. How did you get around this? Like, or this roadblock or whatever. Like, so it's really cool. Cause we have people, I don't know if you know, Bill Akeels, he's like in Barcelona. Um, yeah. I was on his podcast. Yeah. That's yeah. Very, very it's great. Cool. Like he's, he's part of the group. Um, and we have some other friends who are like yeah, on the other side of in England, Germany and Germany, England, Italy. Italy. Yeah. Ireland. Um, so Ireland. Been fun. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, let's get a shout out to that so we can put that in the show notes. How can people find out about the that group that you just mentioned? You know, we just talk about it on LinkedIn. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that, that's really the only place we post it. Okay. Yeah, we post it on LinkedIn. Um, if you're interested in it, we'll give you, at the end of the show, we'll talk about how to get in contact with us. Yeah. But just email us or connect with us on LinkedIn and we'll, we'll add you to the, to the invite. I think we have like 40 or 50 people in the invite now. It's it's a pretty, uh, some months are slower than others, but I mean, there could be 20 to 30 people and it. it's pretty amazing how many people are living outside the States, investing in the States, right? So there's a lot of people out there. If you're out there and you're, you're like, I can't invest because I'm not in the States physically. You can. You can. You can, <laughs> you can. Yeah. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and go down that path. Maybe share a little bit more about how people might be able to reach out to you once they're here and, and you know, want to check, you know, connect. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Um, So you can go to this link. It's adventurousrei.com forward slash info. And on there, you'll find mine and Michael's LinkedIn. You can find out more about that. But then we have our podcast on there that you can check out our YouTube channel, which is also about kind of asset management yeah. and acquisitions and things like that. Yeah, we talk about all things. Yeah, give, give us all, give us all those links. Just is it just yeah. through that uh, that link that yeah. you yeah. mentioned. Or is there anything yeah. else? It's all connected no, there. Yeah, okay. you, can, you can find um, everything there. But then also, I have created a new guide, and that's at adventurousrei.com forward slash impact. And that's just how you can create an impact through multifamily investing or just how you can incorporate it, you know, in every which way of investing. Love it. Love it. Okay. Well, as we uh, start winding down towards the end of our time here, is there anything else, uh, any other nuggets that I can squeeze out of you guys that you might be able to share? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, You know, so I would just say for the people who are just getting started or, or, you know, are looking to take that leap into another niche of real estate, um, you know, go for it. Like, just do it. Like, you know, take action. 
that's that's really the big thing for us. Like we just kept taking action, little action day after day after day, and it compounds uh, over time. Just like you know, making yourself one percent better every day, or doing making a one percent impact every day, right? Because all that compounds over time. And in a month, six months, a year, you're gonna be like, you're gonna step back and be like, wow, like yeah, I did not know I was capable of doing that, right? Like our goal, just to put this perspective, like our goal in ten years was to get to. In 10 years was to get to 100 units. <laughs> yeah. um, and we got to 388 units in nine months. So, yeah. so you can do it. Amazing. So you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Just, just keep taking action and, and education and action. Yeah. Love the uh, love the mindset. Love the 1% uh, improvement every day. Congrats on all of your success so far. Um, really uh, just ex- inspired and exciting to see you guys grow. And thanks for coming on the show. And Susie, I look forward to seeing you in uh, Los Angeles in January for the uh, Intelligent Investor Real Estate Conference. So I'm excited. Shout out, shout out to that. And um, yeah, so on that note, um, thanks. Every- thank you guys for being here. Uh, is there anything else? We're good. I think we're good. <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> yeah. that end. I'm still trying yeah. to figure out how to end a, a podcast, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. What I'll say is, uh, you know, thank you everybody for listening. It really means a lot. And, and I'd really, really appreciate it if you could uh, subscribe and hit the like button and, and all that good stuff. And please share uh, this content so that we can have some more wonderful guests like uh, Susie and Michael on here. And uh, on that note, I, I really appreciate it and have a great day. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Thanks Ben. It's a pleasure. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Real Estate Niche Show. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from me or the show, you can follow me on Instagram at Ben Pogut and at the Real Estate Niche Show. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.